First, Prime. Then, Ultra Magnus. And now, you. It's a pity your Autobots die so easily, or it might have a sense of satisfaction. Now. It is time for you to ascend. Hi, Cast Norbs is a channel devoted to the teen to adult toy collector, pop culture fans, and fellow nerd enthusiasts. This is a PG-13 channel. I might say some shit. Viewer and parental discretion is advised. everyone and welcome back to my show it's time for another episode of diecast norbs the galactic fantastic hooligan and i appreciate you all for joining me once again now last week we saw how excited i was about slag and i am still pretty freaking excited about slag nothing can actually beat this guy for what he actually does right now in the kingdom line I thought I was actually a bigger fan of Galvatron for a while, but let me tell you something, Slag upsert that whole entire thing right there and everything, and I don't know, it's, maybe it's actually favoritism because of the Dinobots. Dinobots. Mmm, Dinobots. But I digress, because there is yet another character out there. You know, you'll actually meet this character with so much, undisputedly, the character who is probably like faced with so much like prestige and, and angst at the same time is no one other than Rodimus Prime. And I finally got him in the mail and everything from BBTS. Thank you, Big Bad Toy Store. And look at everything that we've actually got over here already. He's a great figure so far. I really like him. So if you're actually getting him, get him for the figure and everything like that, not so much for like the, uh, uh, we won't talk about that right now or anything like that, but let me tell you something. This is a great figure. One thing that I'm actually gonna say is that this sword right over here, I kinda wish that we actually still had the same paint. Now, with this version, Hasbro and Takara isn't doing that whole thing of like, you know, what, like, look at how cool this could have actually looked if we actually put work into it. You're actually pretty much getting exactly what you're actually getting in the box, you know? So, without further ado, let me take you over to the, um, uh, to my stage over here, and then I'll actually give you a quick review on them and everything. Welcome again. All right, everybody, and here we go. The character who actually bought us a lot of, uh, Chagrin and disdain and everything, but also hope for a new future. It's Rodimus Prime. And right now, we're just taking a look at the, a uh, quick look at the box art, which I think is just highly, highly, highly impressive. If there was anything else that was actually supporting keeping the box and everything, I would definitely do that because I am loving everything on here and everything, including like all this background work right over here and everything and like the fact that they actually colored his sword in here. That's very, very cool. But without further ado, let's bring him out. And it is Rodimus Prime in his Winnebago goodness and everything, you know? He could have actually been like a, he could have actually been in a uh, stand-in for Lone Star Ship in uh, Spaceballs and everything, the Spaceball one, you know? But this guy is really, really fantastic. I love this so much. The devil's in the detailing, everybody, and details is what Rodimus is not lacking. Look at this guy. He is superb. Even though, like, you actually have, like, a lot of plain feels here and everything like that, it's still 
really, really wonderful. He's got an Autobot insignia right over here. I kind of wish he actually had an Autobot insignia right over here, but it wouldn't be Rodimus Prime. But he actually does come with flames. That is indeed Rodimus Prime. I kind of wish that these were actually sunk in a little bit more and everything to actually give you that Rodimus feel and everything like that, or maybe to give you like that fans project feel and everything like that too, you know? He actually has like the smokestacks right over here, which I wish were uh, like a little bit more connected right here and here. Like the way I kind of feel like that could have actually been done was that this could have actually just had a slider that just like slid right into here or something, making this a, a connection a little bit better and everything like that, you know? The spring is actually kind of like weak on my copy and everything like that altogether but it would have actually made a solid connection right over here and not break up the illusion of the smokestacks or anything. So like, I think that would have actually been pretty great and everything. But aside from that, he's great. You know? What I also think is great about Rodimus is that you can actually give him friends, you know? And you can actually like unload. There we go, we've got Cup over here and everything. And that's actually great too. I really do have to come back to like a, uh, to a review of a cup and everything because like at first I was so dead set against like getting one and everything because I actually thought to myself, I had Titan's Return version, so why bother? But I got curious and picked this guy up and then I was just like, yeah, I get it now, I do. So like this is a wonderful piece, but this I love. I love the fact that he's actually got hydraulics right over here and everything that actually opens up. You actually open this up and you can actually connect to any of your uh, little mini Titans Returns figures. I'm sorry, um, any of your little Kingdom figures and everything that actually form the bridge. And you can actually connect them over here also and everything like that, you know. Multiple uses for this, you can connect that to like Omega Supreme's uh, Omega Supreme's like bridge of parts and everything like that, so that's actually kind of cool. And to put this down, it just works really, really well. But to over here, just make sure you kind of like tighten that up a little bit, and there we go. And my first comparison right over here will actually be Rodimus and Cup, Optimus Prime and Rodimus Prime. And I'm, I, I don't want to sound like a butthurt fan or anything like that, you know what I mean? Like, I really, really don't, but I really think that they should have actually given Optimus a little bit more attention to detail and everything like that because this trailer, I actually got like the upgraded parts from uh, Non-F. And so like I was able to use the non-F parts to like actually give his, uh, to give this like a little bit more of beef and everything like that if you want, uh, for lack of a better term. But let me tell you something, this one altogether, I think I like the way this was actually structured. It, it's just so good. And just to give you a little bit more, here goes my guy Slag hair and everything next to Rodimus Prime. Great sizing here, by the way. And since I've got Slag over here, I love that Rodimus actually comes with a ton of accessories over here. We actually get like all of these pieces right over here and everything like that that are actually all effects parts and everything. And I love that Rodimus is actually able to share his effects parts with Slag here because he can actually now wield a beautiful blue flame here and everything, which I think is actually very, very cool. So just let me plug that into Slag right over here. And again, I do wish that this piece actually kind of toggled down a little bit so he can actually put this all in here and kind of like make him able to wield this blue flame and pure style and everything like that because I think that's actually very cool. And I just wish that Slag actually came with a lot more. Like Rodimus over here is actually full of great surprises over here. Now, if you actually wanted to store a couple of those pieces in here and everything, you could easily just put a couple of pieces in here for storage and everything. Not these pieces so much or anything like that because there's like it doesn't like really fit in whatsoever or anything which is actually kind of a shame altogether and everything i wish that actually did fit there and everything and as i said before kind of wish that it actually had like blue flames and everything like that because like i think that would have actually been like a great color contrast let me show you this thing here which is actually really nice like he actually has like places where you can actually store more weapons and everything like that so 
this is actually kind of cool. And I love the fact that you actually have like another tray over here. We could actually install more effects parts. You actually have the photon eliminator here and everything. Rodimus's gun of choice, uh, you know? So that's actually really, really nice. And I love the way it's actually modeled. If you wanted to store it away in his other alt, uh, in his other alt car mode, you can actually like fold it up. You can actually store it on Rodimus in robot mode, but we'll get to that in just a moment. We also have his Spartan sword here. Now, I think that this is actually supposed to be like the, of like a sword of the Matrix, or a, is it the sword of Vector Sigma or something like that? I don't really know, because I haven't really followed the comic story in a while, you know? But that is a very cool modeled sword right there, you know? I love, like, how inspired by Greek mythology this actually is. Also, if you actually really wanted to, you could actually come over here and you could actually store this sword, like, right on the bottom of Rodimus, right here. There we go. And you can actually have him take that with him and everything, you know? So that's really, really cool. Also, he actually has these two pieces right over here, which... I don't know, it's kind of a miss to me. I really think that they actually went the wrong way with the color on this one. I kind of feel like it should have actually been like as magical and blue as say this, how the fire actually is, you know? Because I really think that this would have actually been just like better color matching and everything. Also, kind of like the wrong message here and everything when it comes down to Hasbro like and their and their thought on like not leaving a carbon footprint. Also, we actually get this blue matrix piece right over here, but I just wanted to slide this in to show you what else you could actually do with it. Now, you just put them right over here on these two rails, and then you just slide on these two rails or on opposite side, and just slide that in. And I also love the modeling that actually goes on here too and everything. Good job modelers, by the way, you know? Also, you could actually put these two effects parts right into the smokestacks right over here, which is very cool. And he is off racing for the family. Yeah. Rodimus also has an ulterior auto mode, and that will actually be this crossover right over here, which is actually kind of nice, actually. I like this a lot. The one comparison I'm gonna bring in is Hot Rod right over here. I really did love everything that actually goes on into Hot Rod. And before I bring you into transformation, I do actually have to say that I love everything that actually read into Rodimus. And I love the fact that there are no far parts going on in this guy whatsoever. Rodimus and Hot Rod actually look like, so like the before and after of that whole entire thing. And that's great. I'm gonna give you a transformation on Rodimus Prime right now. Okay, I think I've talked enough about vehicular mode. So let's get on into robot goodness. First off, we're just going to remove the trailer for just a little while. Uh, there we go. It's out of the picture. And now we're actually gonna go onto the base Rodimus. So, first thing we wanna do is just like, take these two tabs right over here and move them forward actually done by a hinge that's actually right there then we'll move this and keep that there for now next thing we want to do is separate right from here oh and let's remove this sword we want to disconnect this piece right from the top and swing this around we're just going to keep this here for now then we'll dislodge his arms right here and here. And let's work on the legs. We'll separate his legs. And those are actually being held in by a couple of friction. Uh, there's a friction peg that goes right in here and here. We will take his feet and dislodge. Uh, there's a clip that's actually right over here that's actually holding it in by the wheel well. So, We'll extend his legs according in them out. We will snap his, his uh, tire right into the well. And then just bring that forward. And that will go right in here. And that goes right into this plastic piece. And then 
just go right here and there's another peg that goes right in here and now just open up his feet and you have a leg done and let's do it again there we go we'll accordion that out we will put the wheel right into the wheel well and bring that all in we'll try as a our best to get that in because sometimes that actually likes to pop out again and that's the only thing I don't like about this part of the transformation then rotate his waist we'll start bringing out his arms and this is the one part that I think is actually just kind of lackluster on my copy on my copy we actually have a, there's a little loose part that keeps on like just knocking itself out altogether in transformation, at least on my copy. What you want to do is bring that down and bring this down right over here, right into the chest cavity. And remember, be careful of this because when you're transforming it, it does have a tendency to like let itself loose and go flying someplace or the other. Just make sure you don't lose that piece. I'm actually probably going to have to like thicken that up on my copy. So just be warned. Now, bring all of this down then we're going to take this piece and I love this part of the transformation here we'll rotate that whole entire arm assembly right around here we're going to take this black piece bring it right down to this cavity and then there's a peg that goes right in here to here and there we are and we'll do the same thing on the other side Bring that black piece in and connect it right over to this peg hole right here. And once you've actually got it, there it goes, solid connection. Rotate his head for his head reveal. Bring all of this in. Now you actually have to snap this piece right in here to make that connection. Try to do that. It's actually kind of tricky, but once you got it, you got it. And then there's a piece that goes right in here. There we go. We'll just bring this in right over here. And there we are. And this piece will go right into this window right over here. This black piece is actually going right into the window right there. All you want to do is bring this in and just push it down a little bit to like actually give it a little bit more access into that window. Once you have it, there you go. You're actually making a solid connection. Then all you want to do is bring these pieces out, flip it, bring this piece down, and that will actually cover the back of the arms. There's a connection piece right in here and in here that solidifies that connection and then you want to do the same thing on the other side bring that around bring this piece down and there's a connection piece right in here and a connection right there so all you want to do is bring that down bring this in and there we go and after all of that we have Rodimus Prime in robot mode sorry for shaking the camera so much guys for some reason I just feel like I've actually been like hitting this camera all day and everything like they give you the Michael Bay effect but let's take a look at his eyes here and everything I don't want to say that he looks old or anything like that because in hand I think he looks amazing and everything like that. The one thing that you're probably, I, I, everybody actually has like a different like taste in how they actually feel Rodimus actually looks and everything. It doesn't look like, kids get off my lawn, kind of like older or anything like that, but he it does look like a little bit older, a little bit wiser and everything, probably like a little bit more gnarled from like the, uh, from like the ills of warfare and that sort of thing and everything. But he's actually very cool. I'm just like giving you like a quick turnaround here. 
And I love all of this detailing here and everything like that. I'm actually even a bigger fan, a big fan of these like larger wings and everything that they actually gave them. Just very, very nice. Like all that moment detail is beautiful. I really love this. I can't say it like enough about him whatsoever or anything like that, you know? Let's get through articulation real quick. He actually does have a 360 and everything. He can actually look up pretty high and everything. Doesn't really have like a downward look or anything like that, but he actually does have this bobbing head thing and everything like that where he can actually like just kind of like go back and forth and everything like that on that on that uh, on that um, ball joint and everything like that. So that's actually very cool. He yeah, can actually tilt his head and everything like that. So you actually have like a lot of emotive factors. He actually has a backwards butterfly and forward butterfly right over here. I kind of wish that, that on the inside that the connection were like a little bit more solid and everything like that, but it's actually really nice. You can actually use it for just like about anything and everything like that. There are reasons why that was actually being used and I'll show you in a minute. He actually has, oh, one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to extend his arms here and here. Sorry about that, everybody. Remember that in the transformation. I always forget about that. So he actually has a double hinge right over here on his arm. So that actually gives you a lot of range of movement. He actually has a rotation by the bicep right over here. He has, a, he actually has a rotation on his hand right over here. You can actually bring his hand in and out like this. You have a couple of digits right over here that actually have some movement and everything like that. You actually have a hinge right over here that's actually on these three fingers and two realms of movement right over here and everything on his index finger. So you can actually give him an open and closed fist and everything like that. You can really say, this is the end of the road, Galvatron. Or you can actually say, kids, get off my lawn, you know, and like either way is correct, you know? You have a rotation on his waist right over here. The backpack actually kind of gets in the way and everything like that, but you do have like a good realm of movement here. You can go back only that far and everything, you know, which is actually kind of a shame, but the, on the same way as on Hot Rod, it actually gets stuck right over here. You know, like you can actually go out pretty far and everything. That's great. But like right back here, that's where he actually loses it and everything, you know, and that's kind of sad. He actually has a double hinged uh, a knee right over here. So that's actually really nice. Give you more than 90 degrees and everything like that. He actually has rotation on his thigh right over here. And he actually has ankle tilts, which is actually really nice. Goes out pretty far and everything. Also a little bit of dorsi, no flexion, but really, really nice. And one thing I like about this figure is that you can actually get him to like, kind of like bend on me and every, I'll bend on his knee and everything like that without breaking up the robot mold or anything like that. So that's really, really nice. That actually comes in handy for like your hero poses and that sort of thing, I guess, you know what I mean? But just like really, really nice stuff right here and everything. I'm loving Rodimus. The array of accessories Rodimus Prime comes with is pretty great. I don't know exactly which one to talk about first. Um, we're going to talk about this trailer in just a second. But first, let me just give you the Black Smoke, actually. And it can be used here also and everything. Like, I like that you can actually put them... Let's see, you have a couple of peg posts right over here that goes into a couple of peg holes right here. And... That's cool. I like the fact that you can actually use them in the smokestacks in his arms. And as far as like having black smoke, I guess knives coming out of his arms and everything, that's actually pretty cool. Again, if you actually went with like another color Hasbro and Tagara, that would have been so much more phenomenal. I really love the blue that's actually going on here, and I kind of think that that should have actually been your theme, you know? So if you actually gave him, like, if you had actually followed up with giving him magical blue, like, uh, 
all magical blue flames and everything like that, that would have been pretty cool. Because you did that with Hot Rod, and that was actually awesome. I love the fact that you actually did that with him and everything, giving him like blue lasers that popped out of here. I just kind of wish you had followed that up with Rodimus Prime here, because either that or giving him like an array of lasers and everything that comes out of his forearm, and because that would have actually been great. I love that. But, you know, as far as this is actually concerned, it's actually nice for hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'm not exactly sure what you could actually imagine, like this being like maybe the carbon blades or something like that, you know? But, I'm just gonna put these away for a second, and we all know he's actually gonna come with like blast effects and everything like that. So like, these are the same blast effects that they used on Skylinks which is really, really nice, and I love the fact that they actually did it in blue. One thing I think I want to talk about is his gun here, the Photon Eliminator. I, the Photon Eliminator, sorry about that everybody, but like, I really think the Photon Eliminator is actually really, really nice. It's a great weapon. I kind of wish that they actually had a way of splitting it apart so it could become two rifles. And that would have actually been awesome because we got that in the Power of the Primes, uh, in the Power of the Primes, and that works really, really well. I kind of feel like this could have actually been something that could have actually been used here too. So, what you want to do is just put that in his hands, and he actually has his blaster. It's great. And remember when I was, remember when I was actually talking about slag and how much his weapon didn't protrude. I think they got that with Rodimus a lot more. So with Rodimus, if you actually wanted to put any kind of weight whatsoever on his gun, you could, and it's kind of like limitless and everything. Like, that's really nice. Like, I could put like this, this, and I could put this on here also. And like, that's very, very cool. And it doesn't really, like, I mean, it works, I mean, it works on his hand and everything like that because of the weight, the electric dragon on his hand, of course. But on his gun itself, it doesn't really do anything to, like, to, to actually, like, drag any weight onto the gun itself or anything like that, or it doesn't, like, easily flop off or anything, only because of the fact that this actually protrudes a lot more. And that's really, really nice. That was actually good thinking on Hasbro and Takara's part. I love that. I kind of wish that you could actually do that on Slag too, because on this, I kind of like feel as though this actually became a little bit lackluster and everything when it comes down to holding anything in there. But at least you could actually get one blast in here and that's okay. But it still kind of like leaves me like just wanting more for slag and everything like that only because he's slag, you know, the flamethrower, you know what I mean? So, in any case, I'm going to put slag aside and keep on talking about Rodimus. With the Photon Eliminator, all you want to do if you actually want to like give him like some storage is you can just fold it up like so and you can actually put it right on the side or on his back, wherever you actually want it. I kind of feel like if you actually put it up like this, it gets in the, ar in the way of his arm and everything. So I usually tend to, oh wait, maybe you can just put it up like this. There we go. Doesn't really get in the way of his arm after that or anything like that. So that's actually kind of cool. So you could actually do that and Let's talk about his sword. His Spartan sword is really well modeled. I love this thing so much. I mentioned that in the beginning, and just let me put this in his hand. And I never thought of Rodimus as like being a sword wielder or anything like that, but I am not disappointed whatsoever. That's really, really cool. And I think that that's actually a great weapon. So I actually welcome the addition. At first, I kind of cursed it because I was just like, "Ah, oh, it's Rodimus. He doesn't need a he doesn't need a sword or anything like that." But like when I put it in his hands, he needs a sword. You know, like that's very very cool. I love this a lot. And again, if you actually wanted to store it away, I love how they actually did this, and I kind of hope that they actually do this a lot more with swords in the future. 
you can actually just pull that peg out right there and you could actually just like put this right on his back like so and very very cool you could even put it over here also but i kind of like the way it looks on his back you know like it's just it's, it's cool i love this now let's talk about the main attraction here and everything because because rodimus prime is a prime he will actually have the matrix of leadership embedded right in his chest here you could take it out just like you were able to on Optimus and everything, you know? It's really nice. It's actually well modeled and everything. It, well, you've actually seen one Matrix from the uh, from the Kingdom line and from like the Siege line and everything. We've actually pretty much seen them all. And it's got like a little bit of gold. There's some blue that actually goes in the background and everything. If you actually flash the light right through that, you can actually get like a, a like, pretty nice blue light through there. But the one thing that you actually want this matrix for is for this reason. Just plug this in on either side and Rodimus can light your darkest hour. And now we can actually see where the beauty of the butterflies actually, of, of the butterfly shoulders actually comes in because he's able to like just scooch his uh, shoulders up just a bit and then like right in here you can actually put his thumb into like a either side of the hilt of the, uh, of the Matrix of Leadership, and there you go. It's actually really brilliant. I love the way that's actually done. Worked a lot better than it did on Optimus Prime, which, again, is actually sad. I promise you, I'm not hurt by that. I promise you about that, because, like, uh, I just wish that they actually did as much with Optimus as they actually did with Rodimus here and everything. And somebody correct me, I don't know, but I, from what I actually heard, I heard, like, he's actually got, like, great weight distribution all around him and everything, and I hear that it could actually be because he actually has some die cast in his thighs. Now, feeling him, like, feeling, like, all around and everything like that, all, like, I don't know if the die casting is actually there or not, so if somebody actually knows, just, uh put that in the comments and everything like that. I know uh, fellow Transformers Hooligan Clinton ago actually told me a little bit about like the die casting and everything like that. I can't really tell. I know it's actually really well painted. But um, yeah, just let me know because I'm actually kind of curious about that. But like I do notice that it, like all the die casting really makes a like a real drastic difference in the way his, da his dance is actually concerned. And now that his matrix is actually back into his chest, all you want to do, when you're actually putting it in his matrix, all you want to do is just put that in and then fold that and clip that right into his chest right there, and that's great. I really love this design. Now, let's talk about his trailer. His trailer is actually very, very cool, by the way. You know, like, you know that he actually carries, like, a whole hell of a lot of, like, equipment in there and everything like that. You could actually put, like, equipment in here. You can actually put, like, uh, supplies in there and everything like that also. But, like, when you open this up, you actually have his... I don't even know what you call this thing. Is it a mega cannon? I don't know. But you actually have this siege cannon right over here and it's very very cool really well designed harkens back over to like the 84 lineup and everything or like i'm sorry the 86 line where rodimus prime actually first made his appearance and everything you know and that looks amazing to me i really love that a lot so i'm going to I'll tell you what i discovered Yesterday's diecast norms actually didn't remember this, but today's diecast norms did, and he found a solution to a problem for Rodimus. Rodimus was actually astonished at the fact that Galatron could actually murder and like on such a on, with such efficiency and everything because of his handy arm cannon. Rodimus had a problem because he too had a murder machine, but he couldn't take it with him everywhere he went or anything like that, like to parties and barbecues and that sort of thing. But then along comes Wheeljack. Holy shit, I thought you were dead. Nope, Ratchet fixed me up as soon as he fixed himself up. 
nothing can make us die. And what Wheeljack actually did was he was able to like fashion the murder pact to put right onto his back. And now Rodimus was actually free to go off and murder and pillage and do anything he wanted to do to stop the content camp. You know? And this is actually pretty interesting. I think it's actually two things. Kind of silly and kind of interesting at the same time. Because now, he actually has this backpack that he could actually take along with him. It makes him pretty back heavy, you know? But it's a fun little addition and everything. And if you actually really wanted to, like, use that, it's actually an option that you can actually use, you know? If you actually, show to, if you actually so chose to, he can... You can leave it on his back like this also and everything when not in use. So it's actually like another tool that you can actually use in the arsenal of Rodimus Prime. And now, back to the video. And once you actually add your effects parts onto it, that's beautiful. Like you can't really say that that's not, oh, such a, that's not a badass Rodimus right there. Now, as far as the trailer is actually concerned, Optimus's trailer actually had to get a lot of love in order to bring it up to spec and everything. So, again, we actually had to use uh, non-F parts in order to make this thing actually work and everything. But, just to show you, I actually have, like, this is the trailer without non-F parts. We actually have to, let's see, the non-F parts are actually right here. The control panels. The seating in here, this hose, the guns right over here and everything, this antenna, this claw. You know, you actually had to do a lot in order to make this actually stand out as much as, say, like the Rodimus Prime trailer and everything. And you even had to get Roller to go along with it and everything like that, you know? So I kind of wish that they actually did it in a way where Hasbro actually did it in a way where we would have actually been like super happy with like just like more of like what Optimus should have actually been in everything, you know? But um, yeah, there you go. That's a good comparison of them both actually. I still love the Optimus figure, don't get me wrong. I'm never like giving this guy away or anything like that. But I just really wish they actually did more to actually make him stand out here. And as far as like these, like as the pegs right over here are actually concerned in Rodimus Prime here and everything, I don't know, like you can actually go as crazy as you, want to, as you actually want to with all of those pegs and everything. You know, I think it might be a little bit more overkill than anything else, you know? But it's there, use them if you actually want them and everything like that, that's what it's there for. Size comparisons, here we are with Rodimus and Optimus. Here's Rodimus and Cup, Rodimus Prime and Slag, Rodimus Prime and the Ghost of Christmas Past and Future, and finally Rodimus Prime and Galvatron. And I really love the way these two look together and everything. If you've actually seen my pictures on Diecast Norps Activate on Facebook already, you know that I'm actually enjoying these guys so much. You can actually find my pictures also on Diecast Norps Activate on, um, on Instagram also, because these guys just really say a lot to me about how far toy technology actually goes and like how far it's actually come from like where we actually oh from what we actually had back in the 80s to now just really really nice i'm loving this final thoughts are coming up so does rodimus prime actually belong in your collection i think so i really like him a lot and i think that he actually brings a lot of the mystique that the older version of the 86 character actually bought and i think they finally got the quintessential Rodimus Prime in all of this, you know? I think he's great, robust, his design is spectacular. Not flawless, but it's spectacular enough and everything that I definitely think it's actually worth seeing. So I think you should actually pick one up and that's pretty much it. I think he's actually amazing. Go find one. And that's it for me. I really appreciate you all for joining me again today and everything, and as always, when these stop being magical, that's when I'll start collecting. And as always, remember that the most galactically 
gangster thing that you can possibly do is being kind to each other. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to one another out there because kindness will actually always be paid or repaid 1,000 fold. I will definitely talk to you soon.